you. God bless you. God bless you. God is up to something good. I said God is up to something good. You know, the other guy, he always comes to subtract and divide. But our God always comes to add to and multiply. Come on, amen. It's going to get better and better and better. Better. Shout that word. Better. One more time. Better. And I'm with this year, 2014, is going to get better and better and better. If you're ready, shout, I'm ready. As I was praying the first part of this year, I said, Lord, what's ahead for 2014, 2014? He said, for those that will believe, are there any believers in the house? Come on now. He said, for those that will believe, for me, not everybody, but for those that will believe, he said, this is going to be a year of debt cancellations. Oh, hallelujah. He said, this year is going to be a year where you're expectations become your manifestations. Oh, yes. And this is going to be a year of the open door for you. How many say you need the Lord to open some doors for you? Come on now. In your home, your family, your marriage, your business, your school, your ministry, whatever. You need the Lord to open some doors for you. Let me see your hands. Get ready. This is going to be the year of the open door. All around you, the world, the flesh, and the devil will say, there's no way. But know this. He's still God. He's still God. And hell was saying that door will never open. It'll never work out for you. Why don't you forget about it? Why don't you give up? Why don't you hang? Just forget about it. It's not going to happen. Know this. He is still God. He is still God. Now, I go to India about three times a year. And the last time I was going to India, I was flying out of my home. Now, I now live in the beautiful state of Virginia. But originally, I am from the Holy Land. I am. I was born in Alabama, wrapped in swaddling clothes. Hallelujah. But the last time I was leaving out of Virginia, I, I was flying out of Roanoke, Virginia. I was going to India. I was going to go that day from Roanoke, Virginia to Washington, D.C. From Washington, D.C. to Amsterdam. From Amsterdam on to Calcutta, India. That's a long day of flying. And here was, we were we were late leaving Roanoke, got later and later and later and later. Finally, we took off. And by the time I got to Washington, D.C., we were two hours late getting there. And I got off that plane and I began to run down this concourse and run down that concourse. Have you been there before? And run down that concourse as fast as I could to my gate. And when I got there, guess what? There was only one person there, the agent behind the counter. Oh, but I looked at it and I saw the plane was still there. And I said, ma'am, I said, that's my flight. I've got to get on board that flight. She said, I'm sorry, sir. They've already boarded the plane. I said, but it's not my flight fault that we were two hours late getting here. I'm sorry, sir. They've already boarded the plane and the door is shut. There's no way the door can be open for you. I said, but ma'am, you don't understand. She said, I'm sorry, sir. It's against the rules and the regulations. It's against the policies and procedures. It's against the, the law of the Medes and the Persians. Come on now. <laughs> She said, we can't do it. And I said, but ma'am, she said, I'm sorry, sir. The door is shut for you. And as I stood there, all of a sudden, I heard that hissing sound. How many know what I'm talking about? Hell was saying, ha, ha, ha. Hell was saying, the door is shut for you. Well, guess what? I've learned not to sweat it. I've learned not to sweat it. Big deal. He's still God. And I was standing there and hell was saying, 
the door is shut. And I just turned around and I said, devil, come with me. You're still a loser. I'm still a winner. I'm heaven bound and you're hell bound. And I turned around and I just started saying, thank you, Lord. I started raising up my voice in praise to my God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. And I walked maybe about 15 or 20 feet, John. And as I was walking, coming down the concourse, there was this one lady. She said, hey, Brother Johnston. I said, hey, I didn't know her, but thank God she knew me. Amen. <laughs> and she was with the airlines and she was from Atlanta, but she was up there doing some training. And she said, hey, what's going on? I said, hey, I just missed my flight. They've already boarded the door shut. It's over for me, too late for me. She said, Hold on just a moment. And so she walked behind that counter, got, grabbed that radio. She said, I want you to open the door. There's one more. There's one more. And I can hear the Holy Ghost saying the same thing right now. All around you, every demon spirit said, the door has shut for you. It's never going to happen on your job and your business, your ministry. It's never going to happen. But I can hear the Lord saying, there's one more. There's one more. Tell somebody, say, and you're the one. And you're the one. Oh, hallelujah. And when that happened, guess what? I got shouting happy. Come on now. Oh, hallelujah. How many of you have got something to shout about? Hallelujah. Oh, we got a reason to shout. We've got a reason to lift up our hands and kick up our heels. Oh, hallelujah. He is Lord. Amen. Woo, hallelujah. I'm ready to preach. I haven't preached since last night. I'm getting antsy. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Well, would you stand, please, just one more time, please? Oh, God is so good. God is so good. When Brother Josh gave the formal introduction, he said, and now, Reverend. I like that. Reverend. I'm called by many names. I am Reverend. I am evangelist, I am bishop, I am doctor, but also now I am papa. Hallelujah. Just had my first grandbaby. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm papa. Hallelujah. And I was talking to a friend of mine. He's a Hebrew scholar. He reads, he writes, he would teach us Hebrew. And I said, I just had my first granddaddy. He said, now you're granddaddy. I said, no, I'm not granddaddy. I am papa. He said, papa. I said, yes, papa. He said, but do you know what papa means in the original Hebrew? I said, no. He said, oh, you're blessed. I said, I don't want to. He said, do you know what it means? I said, no. He said, papa means strong warrior and mighty man of God. I said, really? He said, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But I can tell you this, a Hebrew scholar said and meant that. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Well, how many have your Bibles with you tonight? Are your iPads, iPhones, Blackbirds, Frogbirds, Bluebirds, whatever you got, hold them up high. Come on out. Oh, yes. I want you to say this with me, please. Say, I'm a warrior for the Lord with my two-edged sword. I'm armed and dangerous. With the Word of God. How many of you love the Word? Come on, say amen. I said, how many love the Word? Oh, yeah. Honey, this is not just the book of the month. This is the book of all ages. Amen. Hallelujah. As you remain standing, would you turn, please? Or scroll down, whatever you got. Would you turn, please, to Psalms 150? Oh, God is good. God is good. God is good all the time. I got about six pages of notes. I may not get there, but I'm going to give it my best shot. Psalms 150, beginning with verse number one. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. 
Praise him with the psaltery, with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with strength instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath. I say let everything that hath breath. I say let everything that hath breath. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. I want to minister for just a few moments along these lines. It's time to raise your praise. I said, it's time to raise your praise. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your holy word. And I believe, Father God, that the night your word shall go forth. It shall fall upon good ground and will bring forth much fruit. We thank you now. We bless you. And all of God's people said together, Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I said, it's time to raise your praise. You say, why praise? Because, beloved, it's amazing what praising can do. So it's time to raise your praise. Now, let me ask this question. How many of you came tonight to the house of God? You came to this great sanctuary saying, I've come to be blessed. Anybody? Well, know this. Our Heavenly Father is saying the same thing. He said, I came tonight in this place that I would be blessed. And know this, if we will begin to bless him, he will begin to bless us. If we'll begin to minister to him, guess what? He will begin to minister unto us. And so, church, it's time to lift up your heart on high, to lift your voice on high, and begin to praise him because he alone is worthy. You say, but I am not a praiser. Then you are dead. I didn't say that the Bible has that to say. In Psalms 115 verse 17, the Bible says, The dead praise him not. How many of you are alive? Anybody? Come on, talk to me now. So, beloved, if you're alive, if you inhale air, you must, of necessity, exhale praise. It's time to praise the Lord. And mark this down. The depths of your praise will determine the magnitude of your breakthrough. I'll say it again. The depths of your praise will determine the magnitude of your breakthrough. You say, but you don't know what I'm going through. It doesn't matter. Praise him anyhow. You don't know what I'm facing. It doesn't matter. Praise him anyhow. But you don't know the battles and the heartaches and the struggles and the frustrations and the woes and the things I'm going through, honey. Welcome to the family of God. Amen. You see, the devil is out not just to annoy you. He is out to destroy you. Oh, but let battles come. Let storms rage. It doesn't matter. We are wrapped up and tied up and bounded up in our great God. And I've got a word for you. Everything is going to be all right. Come on, shout amen. amen. And since that is true, it's time to raise your praise. I said this many times over the years. When your praise goes up, something comes down. I said when praise goes up, something comes down. Now, I got this from a little mama. Now, my daddy was very tall. My daddy was about six foot four. My mom was four foot nine. Oh, what a difference. Come on now. I mean, that when she was wearing three inch heels standing on her tiptoes. But anyhow, here my mom and dad were. And my little mama, in 2004, on a Saturday night, my little mama was struck down. I mean, she was struck down with a massive stroke. And they called the paramedics. They rushed her to the hospital. And when they got to the hospital, they looked at her. And this time she was 88 years of age. But they looked at her and they began to shake their heads saying, it doesn't look good. Because of her age, because of how she'd been knocked down with a physical attack, they said she may not even make it to the night. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. I got two words for you. But God. 
but God. Well, the next day the doctors came in the intensive care unit. She was laying there to the machine hooked to her body, having suffered a massive stroke. The left side of her body was completely paralyzed, was dead. Her face was all drawn up, her speech was slurred. And, and they looked at her again, they said, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good at all. Well, thank God they left the room. Amen. And when they left the room, my little mother looked over to my sisters with that slurred speech. She said, it's time to praise the Lord. They said, but mama, lay back and take it easy. No, it's time to praise the Lord. But mama, lay back. Oh, no, it's time to praise the Lord. Oh, but mama, you don't feel good. She said, we don't praise him because we feel good. We praise him because... He is good. And she was laying there to the machine, took to her body, having severed that physical attack out of hell. Left side of her body was dead and was paralyzed. Her face was all drawn up. Her speech was slurred. Then all of a sudden she started saying, my Lord, I love you. Oh my God, I praise you. How could I not praise you now? You've been so good to me all these many, many years. My Lord, you're so wonderful. I exalt you. I praise you. Oh, and I magnify your name. Oh, you're so good to me. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, guess what? She did that on Sunday. And she did that on Monday. And she was doing that on Tuesday. And, and while she was doing that on Tuesday, all of a sudden, Everybody shout suddenly. And while she was doing that on Tuesday, all of a sudden, the healing power of the Most High God came down and touched my little mama, and she was completely made whole. Oh, hallelujah. Woo! I'm talking about, I mean, she could barely talk, barely speak, but when the power of God touched her, the whole hospital heard it. Hallelujah. Mama started saying, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Oh, thank you. Oh, hallelujah. I mean, she's an old time, old line, full gospel Pentecostal saint. And they started coming, the doctors and the nurses and the orderlies, and, and the, everybody came in, and mom had both hands ready. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, they said, calm down, calm down. She said, no, no, I'm going to turn it up. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, he's worthy. You say, what happened? It's like this. When praise goes up, something comes down. You say, but you don't know what I'm facing. You don't know how hell is bombarding me, honey. It doesn't matter. Praise him in hell. But what about the economy? It doesn't matter. He's still my source. Praise him in hell. But I've been told by the doctor. I've been told by the lawyer. I've been told by the banker. I've been told by the counselor. I've been told by the... The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. Honey, it doesn't matter what they say. What matters is what he says. And he said, everything is going to be all right. And so, Robert, it's time to praise him. It's time to praise him. Why? Because when your praise goes up, come on, somebody. Won't you raise your hands up right now and begin to praise him. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, when you praise him, what's happening? Healing is coming down. Miracles are coming down. Joy is coming down. Oh, hallelujah. Increase is coming down. Deliverance is coming down. Blessing is coming down. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Shout. Shout. Oh, hallelujah. He's worthy. He's wonderful. Oh, hallelujah. I said, it's time to raise your praise. Tell somebody he's talking to you tonight. Amen. It's time to raise your praise. The Bible tells us in Psalm 48 verse 1, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Amen. The Bible tells us in Psalms 18 verse 3, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. The Bible tells us in Psalm 113 verse 3, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Bible tells us in Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at 
all times. His praise shall be continually in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear the rather and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Come on, shout amen. And the Bible tells us that everything that hath breath do what? Praise the Lord. Starting the first of this year, before I did anything else, I started praising God. Before I get up and have my morning coffee, I praise God. Before I have, you know, a shower, I praise God. Before I go to the fitness center, I praise God. I need to praise Him. Hallelujah. Come on, say amen. I got to tell you this. Can I tell my kids, can I do that? Come on now. I came back this morning from the fitness center. I'd worked on my lather. I mean, Woo! An hour I came back, I was soaked. I walked in the house, and my son said to me, He said, Now he knew, but he said, Daddy, where you been? I said, I've been to the fitness center. He said, Daddy, you don't need to go. I said, I do too, buddy. He said, Daddy, you don't need to go to the fitness center. I said, I do. He said, Daddy, you're already built like a God. Woo! <laughs> then he's paused, he said, Buddha. Hallelujah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Thank God for kids. Amen. Oh, but church, before I do anything this year, I said, Lord, the first thing I do, I'm going to get up and spend 30, 45 minutes, hour more, and praise to my God. Honey, that's the way to start the day. Come on now. Oh, hallelujah. Why? Because when praise goes up, something comes down. I said, when praise goes up, something comes down. Do you believe that? Come on, shout amen. amen. And I'll say it again. The depths of your praise will determine the magnitude of your breakthrough. How many of you need a breakthrough in certain areas of your life? Come on. Oh, come on, shout a big hearty. Amen, amen, amen. Now, my little mama told me that when God raised her up off that bed the hospital. She says, son, don't forget it. I said, what, mama? She said, don't ever forget. When praise goes up, something comes down. When praise goes up, something comes down. And I hadn't forgot it yet. I'll never forget it. It was in the fall of 2010. That time I lost my wife, my, my sweetheart, my best friend, the love of my life, my bride, my, my hunk of hunk of burning love. And, you know, we started off just like you guys did, our first place we had was a one-bedroom apartment, 500 square feet. Remember those days? Oh, yeah. And then, God bless us, we had a two-bedroom apartment. Oh, come on now. Then the first home, we began to, you know, God began to bless us and bless us. And after a number of years, you know, we had a beautiful home, a three-story home. Somebody said, oh, you're lucky. Honey, that was 35 years of hard work and believing in God. Come on now. <laughs> but I didn't need that house anymore. Come on now. I don't like doing cleaning. Come on now. <laughs> Yeah, and so I had a big old home, and I didn't need it. And so, you know, my daughter, she was gone, moved away with some of you know, off at college by myself. I didn't need it. And so I said, Lord, what do I do? He said, put it up for sale. I said, but Lord, I said, this house is for sale up and down the street. He said, begin to praise me that it's a done deal. I said, Lord, I do praise you, but Lord, he's had his house for sale for six months. He's had his house for 12 months. He's had his house up for 24 months. He said, begin to praise me. I said, but, 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 but God, has anybody ever got the but, 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 but guns? I said, but God, he said, but son, he's got a real estate agent. He's got one, he's got one. Let me be your agent. I said, okay, God, I needed to sell my house. I said, Lord, what are we? He said two things. He said, have faith in me and praise me. Have faith in me and praise me. I said, Lord, I will. He said, no, not when the house is sold. You begin to praise me now like you're going to praise me then. Oh, come on, Sam. And church, what do you need from God? What do you need to them, honey? Why don't you begin to praise him now like you're going to praise him then? I said, why don't you praise him now like you're going to praise him then? Come on, raise your hands up one more time. Oh, yeah, when the thing happens, when it manifests, when it comes to pass, yeah, you 
you're going to praise him. Oh, but church, why don't you praise him now like you're going to praise him then? Why don't you shout now like you're going to shout then? Why don't you rejoice now like you're going to rejoice then? Oh, come on, shout amen. Woo, hallelujah. He said, have faith in me. Church, I believe God. He's a mighty God. If God said it, whoa, you can hang on to that. He said, have faith in me. I said, I do. He said, and praise me that is so. I said, B -b 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 God. He said, have faith in me and praise me. I said, okay, what do we do? He said, have faith in me and praise me. Come on. Do what? Have faith in me and praise me. Believe God and praise God. I said, okay, Lord, I will. He said, you're not acting like it. I had to change my attitude. Come on now. And I started saying, Lord, I praise you that the house is sold. I praise you that the house is sold. It doesn't matter how many houses are for sale up and down this street in this subdivision. Lord, I praise you the house is sold. I praise you the house is sold. I thank you, Lord that you're bringing the right buyer, Lord. You're going to bring in the right one. Oh, I pray. And I started getting into them. Oh, hallelujah. I said, thank you, Lord. Oh, glory to God. Now, that was on a Monday night. He said, I want you to go and put it up for sale tomorrow. So the next morning, Tuesday morning, I went to the harbor store. I got it for sale by owner sign. I came home. I wrote my phone number on that sign. I went and put the sign in the front yard. And I said, There. I then went inside the house to fix myself a cup of coffee. Still praising God. And the coffee finished, percolated, finished making, you know. You know and so I was just pouring myself a cup of coffee. And guess what? The telephone began to ring. And, uh, and I had the phone in my hand. And I said, hello. Good morning. I'm calling about the house for sale by owner. I said, yes, yes. Can I help you, please? Well, I'm inquiring about the house. I said, yes. I said, uh, where are you right now? They said, we're outside the house looking at it. I said, you are. So I walked to the front door, opened the front door, and I waved to him. He waved to me. He said, do you think I can come by sometime and look up at us? I said, why well, wait? Won't you come on in right now and have a cup of coffee? Come on now. <laughs> and so he came in, and as he was getting out of the car, the Lord said, have faith in me and praise me. Have faith in me and praise me. Oh, I knew God was up to something good. Come on now. And he came in and uh, I said, let's take a look. at He said, I like this room. I like this. I like the way you fix this and this, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I like this. And I was said, oh, we got him on the line, Lord. We got him on the line. Hallelujah. We got him on the line. Yeah. And I said, let's go on downstairs and talk. I poured him a Fresh cup of coffee, amen. Oh, yeah. He said, I like it. He said, what do you want for it? And I knew I had him. How many of I'm talking about? I knew the price Lord had told me to ask for, but I had him. My flesh kicked in. Come on now, let's be honest. Come on. And I said, I got him. I got him. And so I, whoop, I jacked a little bit of it up. He said, mm, no, I can't tell you that, but I will give you such and such. The same price Lord told me to ask for. I said, Okay, I will. So guess what happened? The house was sold before the coffee got cold. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Woo. As he was leaving, driving away, I said, Lord, he says, son, always have faith in me and praise me. Come on now. How many need God to move for you? You need God to turn some things for you. You need God to set the captives free. Come on, show it, amen. It's time to praise. Him. I said, it's time to praise him. It's time to praise him. Come on now. It's time to praise the Lord. I got six pages of notes. I'll never get to any of them. Come on now. Is that okay? Oh, church, it's amazing what praising can do. It's amazing. Now I got to give you one verse of scripture. I could quote it, but I want you to turn, please. You say, but you don't know what I'm going through. It doesn't matter. You don't know what I'm facing. It doesn't matter. You don't know the battles and the frustrations. Honey, guess what? You were born for the battle. You were shaped for the storm. You were created for the conflict. You're more than a conqueror. You're a warrior. You're a winner. You're a conqueror. You're a champion. Come on up. You're not a victim. You are a victor. So begin to praise him. Like, come on. Lucky believe it. Oh, yeah. But you don't know what I'm going through, honey. It doesn't matter. Turn to Habakkuk. 
the man of prophet Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. The prophet said, things are looking rough and tough. But notice what he said. The prophet said, Habakkuk 3, verses 17 and 18. He said, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the island shall fail, and the field shall you no know meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herds in the stall. Look at the next verse. He said, yet. Say that word, please. Yet. I'm asking you to have a yet praise in your life. He said, yet. Everybody shout, yet. He said, yet I will rejoice. He said, everything that could go wrong could be going wrong. Let hell rise up and rage and rattle on. He said, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. And honey, why don't you have a yet praise? Let things rise up against you. Guess what? You're going to make you're not destined to go down. You're destined to go over. You're destined to go up. You're victorious. Oh, come on, shout amen. He said everything could go wrong. He said, but yet I will rejoice. Yet I will rejoice. Yet I will rejoice. Come on, say that. Yet I will rejoice. Somebody else had a yet praise. Who was it? It was the psalmist David. In Psalms 42, verse 11. In Psalms 42, verse 11, Saul was out to kill him. He was on Saul's hit list. But David in the middle of nowhere running for his life. Everything was going wrong. But what did David say in Psalm 42, verse 11? He said, why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Look at it. He said, Hold thou in God or have faith in God. He said, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquiet within me? Have faith in God. Look at it. He said, For I shall what? Yet praise him. For I shall yet praise him who is the help of my countenance and my God. Oh, church, it's time to raise your praise. Come on now. I said it's time to raise up your praise on high because he alone is worthy. The walls of Jericho were set up. They were tall and mighty. But the Bible tells us in Joshua chapter 6 that all the people, how many? All the people, they shouted and the walls fell down. And all Bible scholars agree the shout they shouted was a shout of praise unto God. Read that chapter, Joshua chapter 6. The Bible says, and they shouted with a long, say that word, long, and a great shout. He didn't say with a short and Timmy shout, but they shouted with a long and a great shout. Honey, you give up after five seconds. It's time to shout with a long and a great shout. I've been in many countries around the world, and I go to many countries, and sometimes the pastor will say, this begin to praise the Lord. All of a sudden, the people begin to praise God with a mighty thunderous, you know, praise to God. And after 5, 10, 15 minutes, it's time to move on. And they're still praising God. The sound of a rushing mighty wind. Still, and the pastor has to start ringing the bell. Ring the bell to get them to stop. How many heard that before? They'll ring the bell. Guess what? Here in America, we got to ring the bell to get them to start. Come on now. Oh, yeah. But the Bible says they shouted with a long and a great shout and the walls fell down. Amen. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20 three enemy nations would come against King Jehoshaphat and all of Judah. They were outnumbered three to one. And the king says, okay Lord, what do we do? He said, stand still. I love that phrase. Stand still. Say that please. You look at there in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, he said, stand still. In the region, that phrase, stand still, means to calm down, chill out. Don't get worked up. Don't sweat it. 
Don't panic, amen. Oh, he said, stand still and see the salvation of God. And the king said, okay, then, let the praises go forth in the battlefield. And the praises went forth in the battlefield against three enemy nations. And the Bible says the enemy became so confused that they slew one another. Amen. How many want the victory in your life? Come on now. We'll begin to praise ye the Lord. Let me give you one more. Paul and Silas, they'd been beaten for preaching the gospel. Their hands and feet were in stocks and bonds. And they were at the bottom of a dirty, dusty, dingy jailhouse in Philippi. In the midnight hour, put it up please. Acts chapter 16, verses 25 and 26. Here they were in the bottom of that dirty, dusty jailhouse in Philippi. In the midnight hour, look at it. And at midnight. And some of you are perhaps going through the midnight hour of your life. And at midnight, what happened? Paul and Silas did what? Prayed. I've done that. Oh, Brother Johnson, I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. The Lord knows how much I pray. Honey, don't stop there. The Bible says, and at midnight, there were they prayed. What? And sang praises unto God. But how could they do that? They were beamed Then the bottom of that dirty jailhouse in Philippi, honey. As I said before, you don't praise him because you feel good. You praise him because he is good. Amen. And they prayed and sang praises unto God. And all the prisoners heard them. The next verse. And suddenly, everybody shouts, suddenly. And silly, there was a great earthquake. There was a first jailhouse rock. Amen. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, all the doors were open. And everybody's bands were loose. Amen. If you want the doors to be open for you, you'll be set free. Why don't you praise him in the midst of it all? Come on, shout. Amen, somebody. Raise your hands up one more time. Praise him. Come Come up quickly, please. Oh, hallelujah. What are you saying? I'm saying this. It's time to raise your praise. It's time to raise your praise. It's amazing. I said it's amazing. It's amazing what praising can do. He is worthy. He is wonderful. Oh, come on, church. Everybody stand up right now. Oh, hallelujah. The depths of your praise will determine the magnitude of your breakthrough. You need God to move for you. You need God to turn some things for you. You need God to sell a house, open the doors for on an airline, whatever. Begin to praise Him. Begin to praise Him. Begin to praise Him. Oh, yeah. Because when praise goes up, I said when praise goes up, when praise goes up, oh, hallelujah. When praise goes up, something is coming down, down, down. Oh, hallelujah. Lead us in the Holy Ghost praise song. Raise your hands up high. Come on one more time. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yes. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. We lift up our hands in the sanctuary. Oh, yeah. Lift up our hands in the sanctuary. And bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord.
him. Have faith in him and praise him. Come on out. If God said it, guess what? It's going to come to pass. You can count on God. You can take it to the bank. And if God said it, believe that. If God said it, why don't you praise him right now? You expect it's going to happen. Why don't you praise him now? Like you're going to praise him then. Hallelujah. Oh, I believe God, Josh. I believe God. I believe God. Yeah, I believe with all my heart that this year, this year 2014, for New Life Church is going to be the greatest year. You've had great years, you've had glorious years, but I believe this is going to be the greatest year this church has ever known. God's going to bring increase and growth and promotion and blessing and abundance. Come on, shout amen. Hallelujah. Whoa. But you ain't seen nothing yet. Boy, that may not be good. Grandma, that's good gospel. Come on out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. After I got saved, you know my story, many of you, I got saved on a Sunday night. Two, night, two days later, I went back to the state penitentiary. Yeah, I've been there. Been there, done that. Don't want to go back. <laughs> Served twice in the state penitentiary. My son-in-law graduated from Penn State. He's a professor now at West Texas University. My son-in-law graduated from Penn State. I graduated from the state Penn. <laughs> you liked that, didn't you, Bonnie? <laughs> oh, yeah. Let me move on a little bit further. He graduated Magna Cum Laude. I graduated Laude How Come. <laughs> Here I was in prison. You know, I was facing 40 years. God worked some miracles. I got out in five months. But when I was in prison, God turned my life around upside down. My God. After one month in prison, in a maximum security penitentiary, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Woo! Hallelujah! Yeah. I went back to the cell block and sat down the bunk. And I sat down that bunk and I began to look around and I saw the men who were lost and undone and I said, Lord, they need Jesus. He said, you tell them. I said, I'm a nothing, I'm a nobody. He said, good, that's on you. He called me to preach that Sunday afternoon. I said, Lord, but I'm behind all these bars, got all this time. He said, I'm still in control, hallelujah. And I got out in five months, come on, shout amen. Now, I got out on a Monday. Could have been there for 40 years, but I got out in five months and I was anxious to go to church. I was called to preach, my God. And it just what happened on oh, Wednesday night, kind of like this. I went to the church there, Sweet Home, Alabama. I was anxious to go to the, the house of God, just got saved, and just got out of the penitentiary, saved, and filled the Holy Ghost. And I, was, I went to the, met a guest speaker. One little fellow, I mean, he couldn't speak proper at all. He was ain't, ain't, can't, and we used to, I mean, all kinds of stuff. And, and, Oh, and I got kicked out of all four public high schools in Montgomery, Alabama. And uh, I looked at him and I said, God, I said, uh, what do you say? He said, ain't, ain't, can't. My little mama looked over me and said, honey, his grammar's bad, honey. You can do that. Hallelujah. Thank God for mamas. Come on, amen. But I learned a lesson that night. I'm going to praise my God. I learned a lesson, come on, man. If you'll have faith in Him, if you'll praise Him, oh, the have has not been told what God will do for you. Do you believe that? Say amen. We're going to pray for you right now. We're going to pray for you. Call the church tomorrow. New Caney Family Worship Center in New Caney, Texas, a suburb of Houston. I was there a few weeks ago. Had people stand like you are right now. I didn't lay hands upon them. Honey, you don't need my hand, you need his hand. Come on now. I said, everybody just begin to praise him, begin to praise him, praise him. I said, the depths of your praise will determine 
the magnitude of your breakthrough. I said, come on, forget about those around you. Forget about all those in front of you, behind you. Forget about what you're facing tomorrow. Forget about what you're going through today. I said, just begin to praise Him. And this one young lady, she started praising God. With, I mean, she was getting to it. Oh, I mean, she was praising God. Everything she, oh, hallelujah, glory to God. Pray. And she was praising God. The power of God hit her. Nobody laid hands about her. And she fell out. Whoa. I mean, she didn't give us a CD. That's a courtesy drop. I mean, she fell out in the power of God. But notice this. As a little girl, she fell off the trampoline. As a little girl, she fell off the trampoline and broke her right leg. And the right leg decided not to keep growing. And it was about six inches shorter than the other. And never grew. And she wore those big old built up shoes. Big old stacked shoes. The power got hit her, she fell out. Well, when she got up, guess what? She realized something's different, something's wrong. And then she realized, hey, my leg's grown out. Come on now. Oh, call the church. Pastor Andy Hunt, New Caney Family Worship Center. Oh, hallelujah. You see what happened? It's like this church. When you begin to praise them, something's going to happen. When your praise goes up, miracles are coming down. When you praise them, your healing's coming down. Your increase is coming up. Doors are going to be open. Come on out. Your blessing is rolling on in. Come on. Oh, hallelujah. Raise your hands up high. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every man, every woman to be born girl that is here. Lord, you know what they need, what they're going through without facing. But I believe that you are bigger. You are bigger, my God. And I believe that you're going to show up and show out for them. Oh, God, I believe for them that this year, as you told me, January the 1st, it's going to be a year of dead cancellation, oh, God. It's going to be a year where our expectations become our manifestations. And this is going to be a year of the open door. Oh, God, touch your people. But bless your people and those that are healing, heal their bodies in Jesus' name. Give the Lord a shout of praise one more time. Hallelujah!